So welcome back aliens, this is Nobin Reddy from Tariska Learnings and in this video we'll talk about Hypernet Caching. In fact in the last video we have seen the theory of Hypernet Caching, right? How exactly it does caching. So we have seen we have level 1 cache, we have level 2 cache. Let's try to implement that here. And as you know that level 1 cache work with session, so every session will have its own level 1 cache. And the moment you say you, ha you have two different sessions, then your first level cache will be different, right? For that we use second level cache. So what I'm doing now here is we have a session with name session1 and then we have session1.biget transaction, session1.get transaction.commit which will commit the transaction and all the transactions should be done here. So and we are using a table, you can see I'm using a uh, table name as alien table. So if I go to my MySQL, you can see we have alien table here. Let me remove these extra values here. So yeah. So we have alien table here, so if I fire the query, you can see we have three records there, 101, 102, 103. Then we have three names, Navin ready, Navin 1 ready, and Navin 2 ready, and the color is C, it doesn't matter. So what I will do here is, I, will, I want to fetch the value. So how do we fetch a value? Because if I try to print uh, A there, if I say print A, of course the value of A is null, so it will print null value. Okay, you can see it is null. But I don't want null value, I want to fetch some value, so I will say A equal to We'll cast it with alien because we know that whenever you fetch the data from the database using Hibernate, it returns you the object of object. So we'll say session one dot get. That's the method we use to fetch the value, and we'll use a class name as alien dot class. That's how you specify the class name, which will map with the table, of course. And here you have to specify the primary key. So when I say one zero one, I know one zero one is now in ready and color is green. So if I run this query now, you can see the output which we got is the object which we which we wanted, and it has also it has all, uh, also fired a query which is a select query, right? So for one fetching, it has fired one query. But let's say in the same session, if I do this once again with a different value, so I'm I'm again fetching a value. So after printing here, if I'm again fetching the value, but this time instead of going for one zero one, if I go to one zero four one zero two. So of course it will fire two queries, right? You can see we got two values, that's for sure. One is Navin ready, second is Navin, Navin, one dot, Navin one ready. But the number of queries it has fired is two queries, one with 101, one with 102. But what if you fire the same query? You want the values with 101 and 101. If I fire this query now, okay, you can see it has fired the query only once, but the output there are two objects. Now what is happening is since you fire this query for the first time, see whenever you fire any query or whenever you work with Hibernate, it will first check the value in the first table cache. And you can see this value is not there in the first level cache, so it will go to the second level cache. It's not also there in second level cache, so it will go to the, uh, go to the database, it will fire the query. For the second time, it will check, okay, do we have the data in the first level cache? And yes, for this value 101, we do have value in the first level cache. So it will fetch the value from there. It will fetch the value from the first level cache, right? So that's how it is firing the query only once. And that's how you improve the performance of your system because we are not going to database for the second time, right? But the moment you change your session, let's say, uh, let me just end this session here. Uh, let me just do the commit, uh, okay, cut, paste, commit, let's do the commit here and let's keep this part in the second session. How can we do that? Let's copy this code, uh, we'll say copy and paste, okay, we cannot say copy paste, we should say uh, code reuse, that's, that's the awesome word, right? So we'll say session 2 and here we'll say session 2 dot begin transaction and here we'll end the session, we'll say session uh, 1 dot close. Okay, so we are we are going for a second session here, session two, and here we'll say session two dot get transaction, and we'll say dot commit. Okay, and we'll end the transaction as well. So we'll say session two dot close. Now let's see if, how many how many times it fires the query. You can see we have the same data, but this time we are using two different session. This is one session which is getting closed here. This is the second session, oh, I have to change this to session two. So this is the second session here, and now if I fire this query, and you can see it is, it is 
find that query two times. So that means it's going to database for the second time as well. So that means your first level cache works only for that particular session. Now, how do we use with the, so we have to use second level session here, second level cache to achieve, uh, to, to fetch the data from the second session. Or uh, the second session will use the data of the first session provided your values are there in the second level cache. But hold on. First level cache is provided by hypertext by default, right? What about second level se second level session, second level cache? So second level cache is not provided by default. You have to configure it. As you can see in the hypertext configuration, we have not specified anywhere that I'm using second level cache, okay? And that's why it will not use second level cache. So first you have to specify that I'm going for second level cache somewhere here. Second, you have, second thing you have to specify is you have to get the provider for the second level cache because Hypernet will not provide you by default. So you have to get the external files and one of the file which one of the cache, second level cache we can use here is eh cache. Okay. So first you have to download the jar files for eh cache. You have to download the jar files for Hypernet and eh cache integration. Then you have to configure your Hypernet config file and then you can use second level cache. It seems difficult, right? But don't worry, we'll do it in the second video, how exactly we can achieve that. So that's it from this video. We have talked about level one cache. If you liked this video, please click on the like button and do subscribe for, for the videos. Thank you so much for watching.